problematic ises are the is of identity and the is of predication. So is of identity is noun. You've got some ises that are innocent, relatively speaking. You've got, for example, <coughs> um, an is of location. Quebec is in Canada. And there's, nothing, there's nothing too horribly unseen about it. <coughs> Or um, um, Quebec is growing. That's an auxiliary. Is. So there's an is of location, <coughs> and, and there's a, there's an auxiliary is. A, you could almost call it uh, an is of activity. The closer you get to the object level, the better. When you translate it, the closer you get to an actual description of an observable activity. Like John farms three acres. Uh, is a better formulation than John is a farmer. But if I said John is farming, that would be sort of okay, because farming itself is an activity word. It's not an is of identity, it's not an is of predicate. So the object of that is the first level of abstraction from what is going on. Right? The event level is what is going on. And the object level is the first level of abstraction from what is going on. Um, Krasinski, when he talks about abstraction, <coughs> emphasizes that it means leaving out. So if we abstract from what is going on, that means we leave out much, most, <coughs> of what is going on. It's not only a matter of leaving out, it's also a matter of transforming. What is going on is transformed by the brain and nervous system into something quite different. He does emphasize leaving out, and that's an important, that's an important uh, aspect of abstraction, which he pictures as we are called by putting all those little holes in the event level and leading <coughs> some arrows go nowhere and some arrows go into the object. So that much of what is going on is left out. <clears throat> Thus, a key principle of general semantics becomes what Korzynski calls non-allness. Thus, again, we come up upon the etc. Something is always left out, there's always more than has been covered by any map. More than has been related to by any map. Um, <clears throat> Yet another way, the map doesn't merely contain a smaller number of characteristics. It doesn't contain any of the characteristics that are in the territory. If, if this is, if the object level is a map of the event level, and if the label level is a map of the object level, so here we have a map of a map of a territory, and all we have are maps because we never have anything like direct access to the event level. Um, <coughs> the map is always a partial map. Concerned here with the difference between true or false, valid or invalid, subjective or objective. We're concerned here with the difference between object level and label level. And to some extent also with the event This is the main problem with the Aristotelian orientation according to Kozicki. That it's characterized by, by what he calls a semantic block. The identification of the label with the object. The identification of label object through the ises of identity and the is of predication. The identification of label with object amounts to this kind of semantic blockage or blockage to creativity, which ultimately for us is a, is a blockage to the meaning-making capacity, that is the self-governing capacity, that is the democratic capacity of human beings. So this is the block that is when I introduced the course two weeks ago, we're interested in exploring it. And we're talking about obstacles to democracy. I said we were concerned with just one type of obstacle to democracy and actually existing democratic regime, and that is this semantic 
blockage due to what causes cause the Aristotelian orientation. It's kind of misleading to just have maybe one highest label level feeding in there. You can have a whole bunch. The sun is a hot rock. The sun is a fire of angels singing holy, holy, holy. The sun is God. Different ways of making sense or making meaning of what's going on have to be taken account of within the spectrum differential. And why? Because the structural differential is recursive. It refers to itself and doesn't pretend to be a, uh, a, a, a formulation of truth. Which is presented from outside of what is going on. Look at it this way. Up here at the highest level of abstraction. How many times have I already drawn this on the board, and how many times will I have drawn it by the time the first week of January rolls around? The structural differential is in here. General semantics is in there. So the structural differential contains a representation of itself within itself. So it refers to itself. It's self referential, it's recursive, and also puts a date on itself there. <coughs> um, so because it includes itself in the formulation, the map is not the territory. As it says, the map is not the territory. The map is not the territory. And this map, this map, this here is a map. It's the map that tells us the map is not the territory. This map, this map is also not the territory. So on that infinite. The task is, let's say we're let's say we're looking at the roads. To put your attention, to focus your attention on what you see there. And you can also feel it, right? Without destroying it. You can feel pebbles of the roads. So just about any natural or artificial object you choose to be accessible to the senses of vision and touch. Uh, hey, you could chew it and swallow it as well, but you probably don't have to go that far. Some things are probably best not chew and swallow. Whatever. Just do whatever you can do at the sensory level to give your full attention to the object that you chew. Um, if we stay with the rose as an example, you will see the color more vividly than you would in any way. And variations in color on the petal. Uh, you'll notice the precise shapes of the pebbles and their relation to one another. Uh, you'll notice their texture and variations in texture. <coughs> Perhaps little drops of moisture here and there. <coughs> Perhaps little wrinkles in the pebbles. Uh, Perhaps some surprises because the object level has a sea level later. The object level is a level of surprise. You focus your attention on the rose. You give it your attention. You write a report of the experience. And in this, and in, in this report of your observations, you, you try to use as much as possible sensory grounded language. I've decided to instruct people to divide the divide their task, divide their experience into two parts. First, you just look, smell, taste, feel, and maybe some things have sounds as well. <clears throat> and then you describe, as much as possible in sensory-grounded language, what you've seen, heard, felt, etc. 